Hi, so we have done parts of this on previous videos because we're building motor control from our automatic punch. Now, in order to control that motor, what we want it to do is move in one direction until it hits a limit, so that the punch goes down. When that punch goes down, we want to reverse that direction automatically until the punch goes up and stop that cycle so it doesn't carry on. Then we need something to send a signal to repeat that cycle again. We want that cycle to be repeatable up and down um, every time we make a punch under a control. Now we've done parts of this, like I say before, so if you're looking at latching circuits, for instance, where we did latching circuits and hitch bridges using relays, that was a big part of it. If you had a look at the brake, electronic brake for the motor, that was another part of it. But here we've also introduced limit switches. Now I've got this <laughs> circuit here in front of me, and it is a big old jumble of wires because I've laid it out to test on this motor, that that in fact works. So I've got these two switches here that are going to be limit switches, and I've got this three-way switch here, which is a normally open, normally closed, and a common, which is going to be my input switch. Now that one is the one that I will run from the Arduino, because we can get a timing signal for that to perform that cycle action. These perform the cycle action, this one prevents the break, um, breaks it so it stops immediately, and this one's the H bridge. Now, I will lay out those circuits in a second after I've shown you this working, so that we can make sense of what that actual circuit is, and then put it together. So if I connect this motor, because there is no, no limit switch attached at the moment, and I connect the motor uh, to the battery, that motor will spin. And it will keep spinning until it hits a limit. Now, of course, when that punch is going down, it's going to do that and stay latched as long as that is on, because it's partly a latching circuit. So as long as that is depressed, that's going to stay on. Now, of course, we want to reverse that action, but we can do that by pressing this timing switch. We give that switch a press, and the action reverses, even if I let go of this, until we hit that limit switch, which then stops it. Now we can let go of that, and we get a reverse until again it hits that limit switch and stops it. And then we give it a signal and stop it. Okay, so that's how it works to control that motor. You see the motor jumping because of the sudden braking and because it's not fixed down. So that circuit in its totality will do exactly what we want it to do. Now, of course, we've included it with braking on the relay for safety. If the power dies, this will stop. Without juddering forward, it will stop immediately. We covered that in the electronic braking video that we did using relays. Anyway, I think it's best to approach this circuit in parts and then put the circuit together. So first of all, let's have a look at that brake circuit. So this is the original um, brake relay that we did in the uh, motor braking video. And this is how you modify it. And here is the original H-bridge relay that we did when we looked at H-bridges and latching. And here's the modification to that. So as you can see, it's pretty simple, really. Now to tie that all together, we have this, which is the circuit showing all of the switches going to the coils. So to bring that all together, all you do is make the two separate circuits with the relays. So you've got the braking relay, and then you attach it to the H-bridge relay and then use the switches diagram to tie everything else together. Now remember, these two switches will be limit switches on the actual machine themselves, and this one will be under the control of the Arduino. Now we can use another relay, which is exactly what we'll do. We'll use another relay that will be controlled by the uh, Arduino as this switch, and then we'll be able to time everything. Now this is an immensely useful circuit. It um, controls the motion, breaks it so it doesn't overrun, which motors have a habit of doing, of course, if you just cease power to a motor, it will overrun. This breaks it. So it's immensely useful for lots and lots of situations. I mean, this punch is great, but it'd be great in animatronics. I am kind of uh, contemplating doing a powered exoskeleton, which this would be great for as well. So there's a lot of uses for a circuit like this, and I thought I would share it with you as a separate item because it is a lot of information, and then we'll put that circuit onto the machine later. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching.